Hey, what's going on guys? It's Bunkabai here for MMOBomb.com and welcome to our first impression gameplay video for Forge. Now Forge it was originally a buy to play game developed by Dark Veil Games, which has since gone free to play due to the fact that it was unable to garner a huge community when it was buy to play, which makes sense. Dark Veil is a indie company and typically indie based games that aren't free to play and primarily PvP focused, uh, they tend to not get a large audience if there's no sort of like overall progression system implemented or it's just not super popular. Uh, Forge itself though is a quite an interesting game. It combines the class-based mechanics of say an MMO with the aiming system of an FPS and sort of the overall team you know collaboration of something like Team Fortress 2. So each class has their own unique abilities, um, sort of their own play style. You can see here this is the Pathfinder and the Assassin. So you got like a rogue and a ranged DPS. Um, you also have things like the Warden and the Shaman which are tanks and, and uh, healers with respectively, and each of them has access to both individual abilities that help them themselves, uh, those that help their teammates, um, and then those that affect the enemy, obviously. So to begin with here, when you're a new player, you can start off by doing the basic tutorials, the class tutorials, co-op, deathmatch. Um, because this is a PvP game, obviously you will want to probably get yourself familiarized with it before you get into a real game, so people don't get mad at you, etc. And then you can go on to play here and choose your North America, European, or even Oceanic server, um, and then play Team Deathmatch, Capture the Relic, Ranked Arena, or a combination of the three of them. Uh, currently, when I clicked on Random Cycle, I wasn't, okay, oh, now it's working. Originally, when I clicked Random Cycle, it didn't actually choose anything, and I had to click them individually. So this one is Capture the Relic. This is a secondary mode. We had to hunt down the enemy relic and bring it to our base. We can capture towers before depositing relics to boost our score. All right, so no one's actually here at all. That's nice to see. Glad to see that immediately upon free to play, uh, we're not getting the, the people we want. Hopefully, maybe this video brings in the viewers because I've actually had the game uh, since it was buy to play. It was originally 20 bucks. This Forge was actually a failed Kickstarter uh, last year that it failed. Uh, it needed $300,000. It looks like we're getting Team Deathmatch now. Uh, it originally needed $300,000. It failed to get that. I'm going to randomize to choose my uh, uh, side. I'm going to go with an assassin at first. Which is of course like a rogue. It failed to get the 300,000, so it went buy to play on their website. Uh, got enough there to actually release, but not with all, without uh, sort of cutting out some of the necessary features or features they had planned. Um, since then, they've added several new classes. I believe two new classes in the nine months it's been released. Uh, but they're not really adding as much as they would like, which is the reason uh, why they want to go free to play. Uh, so that maybe they can get more of uh, popularity and get more people in here uh, playing. All right, so we're in this team deathmatch mode. I am, of course, this mage. Not mage. <laughs> I am a... Come on. Go invisible. There we go. I'm a stealthy class here. I'm able to go around and get people from behind. I can even pull people into the shadows, which is actually... Whoa, trap. Pathfinder is a good counter to the assassins. A lot of these uh, classes seem like they're good counters to each other. Uh, because, for example, the assassin can get knocked out of stealth through traps, or just so you know, if you actually hit them correctly. But I am going to try to come up behind this guy, do a little thing on him. Come here. So if I get a couple of these stacks of my two up, and if, by the way, just so you know, uh, you actually can do... Oh, he hit me backwards here. Come on. Come on, I'm hitting four. I thought I, had, I can actually dash to four. I guess I can actually dash to four. Good to know. Right, go to stealth. Oh, I'm on fire. I am, I am failing, guys. I, that I don't. Oh my God! What? the Run away. Died. Wow. All right. Let me um, try to actually pay attention to what I'm doing this time and hit the right abilities. If you hit Alt, you can look down here. You can go disorienting strike, which allows you to stun or slow disorient someone depending if you're in stealth or not. Pantera's Kiss is actually the really cool ability. If you do a bunch of punctures, stack that up, and then do this, it does a lot of burst damage. Stealth Smoke Cloud is also interesting. Uh, it basically allows people inside the cloud to be, you know, blinded, whereby everybody outside of that actually can't attack into it. So because this is a, you know, an action-based game where it's third person from the behind, um, you can have all the neat effects like actual full blindness on the screen, um, you know, where you can't see anything, you're disoriented perhaps. So there's a lot of interesting mechanics like that. All right, so now I'm invisible here. Uh, How is it looking? 20 to 23. They are ahead by three here. I'm going to try to come up behind them and uh, get a nice backstab, maybe a disorienting strike. I'm going to come around here. 
Uh, you may notice that there is an energy bar, so below my health bar on the left hand side there is a 100 out of 100. Energy is used in this game to cast abilities, to sprint, which is by holding down shift. It also allows you to double jump off- oh, I saw an assassin's in here. I got him! Oh man, that was awesome. He was just bouncing around in stealth. I managed to take him out. It looks like he was low HP. I'll try to come over here and see if we can get another destroy entering strike. There we go. We're going to puncture up on this guy. Puncture, puncture, puncture. Now, once you get a few punctures on them, you can get the three. If you can get the three. Ah, right, come on. No, I'm not going to get it. All right. Ah, I got him. There we go. All right. So, if I get the, the kiss, what it does is it does a lot of damage uh, after, like, I think a four-second period. So, basically, it crits them at the very end. They take a lot of damage and... Uh, Hopefully they die. <laughs> I've got another cool ability here, which I'll try to use. It allows me to basically take someone. All right, got to take him. Then I'm going to take him into this thing. There. So now he's in the stealth area here. And when he's in the stealth area, he uh, is, invisible, is invisible to everybody else. Oh, God. I may die here. Come on. Come on. No, the kite. It's too great. I don't think I actually got that ability. I got killed. I would wish you could actually see uh, who, who kills you. Like, sort of like a kill cam kind of thing. Uh, both of those guys pretty low. We're not doing too hot here. I'm doing terrible. I don't know why I'm going as assassin all this time. So let's go ahead and change class. Now, if you guys actually watch some of the other games similar to this, say Archblade, for example, you may notice when you change classes in Archblade, I'm going to go with a Pyromancer. When you change classes in Archblade, you lost all your progress. When you change classes in this game, uh, you still maintain whatever score and ranking that you are currently uh, that you currently possessed as the match went on, which means that you're encouraged to change around if you feel like your team needs something. Uh, you can go to that class. There is a healing class, obviously, uh, the Shaman, which allows you to basically sort of meet whatever your team needs are. And the Pyromancer does absolutely insane amounts of damage. Uh, if you could actually... Come on. There we go. Where'd he go? There we go. I sent him flying with my, fifth ab uh, my fourth ability. Basically puts chains on him. Does a lot of damage and knocks them back and actually stuns them for a little bit too. This guy here is just going to get taken out. All right. I also have a nice, really cool ability uh, for the Pyromancer. Pyromancer is very mobile, so he's got an ability that actually will send him flying in the air, which is pretty awesome. All right, so trading blows here with the uh, Pathfinder. Pathfinder's got access to quite a lot of traps, a lot of blinds, just a lot of interesting things to use. Oh, I missed my ability. You can whiff abilities, obviously, and they will go on cooldown. So I'm going to use the flames here. There's a cast time on some of my abilities, but... Got a lot of fire going off. Oh, knocked down! No! No! Maybe he'll die to the, the fire. Ah! Uh, that trap that he put down at the last second. Can't believe he was able to do that. But you'll notice I actually got sort of a, a bonus there. Uh, a little reward for getting a certain amount of damage during the actual gameplay. You get awards for healing, for dealing damage, for killing a certain amount of people. And it's a nice way to kind of keep track of your overall progress, how you're doing during the match. Kind of brings in a little bit of like an FPS, sort of like Call of Duty feel, where you can kind of say, Oh man, I got, you know, six killing blows without, you know, dying or something like that. Um, nice feedback. I do wish there was more modes. No. Oh, I totally pushed him into it. Oh, I'm so... Ah, blah. All right, let's put some fire on this guy. Let's keep him knocked back there. Pyromancer. All right, he's down. All right. So my fourth ability is pretty cool, if I actually do it correctly. It propels me backwards, which means I can do this and actually bounce backwards. Now, I can also bounce off of, you know, whatever is around using my shift button to uh, basically just bounce off the wall or what have you, which is really uh, useful inside. There's a lot of verticality to Forge. There's a lot of areas, as you notice, you can get up pretty high. Let's go ahead and cast that on him. Cast some flame things on him. He should be able to take a lot of damage. Trying to get me. They got a couple Pathfinders, looks like. Got to kind of bounce around as much as I can, not try to get hit by those special abilities. Oh, we got two guys up there. One bottom below, one up top. They have a lot of range classes. I've noticed that range classes kind of seem a little bit overpowered in the sense that uh, you only get access to... Wow. Wow, he was behind me? I didn't... I wish I could actually... There wasn't really a, a clear indication that I was going to hit close range. I didn't see him. I guess he was right outside of my vision, or I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, but it kind of seems like range classes 
sort of have the upper hand in maps like this. They're open maps where there's not as many places to hide. I mean, as you notice, he can try to hit me from all the way up there. In fact, he can hit me from all the way up there, which is pretty overpowered. I mean, I can throw that over there, and it looks like it does hit him, but it doesn't knock him back, unfortunately. So what you're actually forced to do, if you're not a ranged class, is you're forced to run all the way around here and try to get up there and to hit them from above. I'm going to try to actually knock them off. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I messed it up! It's a, it's a somewhat of a long cooldown for this. F six, seven seconds, something like that. Let's see if we can actually get them off. We only have one left, though. And I'm not actually going to be able to get that up. I mean, it's cool that like there's areas like that you can get in the game. It certainly adds like a lot of... Uh, the ability, rather, to... Ah, I'm not going to even... Team's uneven. Yeah. I'm not even going to be able to get up there. Okay. They're, like, way over here. Let's see. How do they... See, they have all these areas. Oh, okay. I found... Oh, I found them at the very last second. Well, I was third. Didn't do too bad. I didn't do too great. Two kills, four deaths. Huh, let's hope for this next game is a, a little bit better. All right. So, what you can do to join a new game is to exit to the main menu, or the server will automatically take you to a new game. What's cool is when you exit to the main menu, you can always hit reconnect here to reconnect to whatever server you were last on. So, if you want to play with the same people, you just reconnect and go back. Now... Two things to go over really quickly would be the level up system. So I mentioned that there isn't any like stat progression through gear and items. And there are levels in, this, in the sense that each of the classes will level up. But you don't have access to like the typical things uh, that you do get in an MMO when you level up. Like stat bonuses, um, new gear, etc. What you get in this game is the ability to move around stat points as well as augment your abilities how they act. So for example here, the Pyromancer. Um, if I focus here, I can curse the target enemy. A hit deals a large amount of damage to the target after 5 seconds. The damage is reduced for each nearby enemy uh, to the target enemy. Whereby the A version of this does less damage at the end of the curse. And each enemy has a set smaller effect on reducing the damage. So while it does less damage at the end of it, um, it also doesn't mitigate as much damage depending on how many people are around. So whether or not you would choose to use one version of the ability or other, isn't necessarily based on is it more powerful but does it fit your style of play is it what you think would best suit you in that moment now if we look at stats and armor here stats for example this is the only area that you can move points around to sort of actually change how much health you have how much damage etc and even then it's not that much what you do get is the ability to say remove a point of physical damage or physical mitigation for your armor and instead increase your nature mitigation so if you're like you know I usually take a lot of damage uh, from people who are close range, physical, like assassins. I like to play a pyromancer. Assassins get really close, they do a lot of damage. I'm going to boost my physical damage at the cost of my nature. So I can be like, okay, I'm going to pull down this, I'll add in a couple points there, and I've moved one point around. That's how much I can move. Every time you level up a class, you can move more points around. So in this case, more physical, uh, more physical mitigation, less nature. In the armor, speed, and energy area, you can do the same thing, uh, but it's with those three stats. So you can increase your overall armor, you can increase your overall energy, or increase your overall speed at the cost of each one of these individual points, depending on what you pull it out of. I haven't unlocked the ability to do any of those yet, uh, but again, it's not really a direct one-to-one -one upgrade when you level up. It's a ability to move stats around wherever you choose so. And then finally, the armor just basically lets you see different armor variations that you can actually choose on your loadout. Um, the armor works in just a cosmetic way. This is somewhat of the way that you actually get uh, to uh, use your in-game currency is by purchasing like uh, armor for your individual classes or perhaps even like boosts so that you level up quicker so you can gain access to more points and move around. There's no uh, pay to win aspects at all to the armor shelf, which is really great to see. Granted, this is just the first iteration of the shop. We may see more stuff added on. But as of now, as you can see, you can either purchase it real money or by using the in-game currency. Now, the in-game currency, I currently have 107, and I don't really have any indication of how long it actually takes me to get that currency. So I couldn't say how long it would take you to level up or play enough games to you know pay, pay for like a full set of armor for your favorite class, all right? All right, so let's go back here. We're going to go ahead and jump into a capture the relic mode this time. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a game with a little bit more people, a little bit more balance, you know. And hopefully, I do better. All right, so it's two versus two. More people are going to come in, obviously. It'll be three versus two once I jump in here. And why don't we show off something different? So I'll show off the warden. It's actually a female. 
this game came out around or about the same time as uh, Skyrim. Don't say it's copying off of Skyrim. Uh, they came out almost simultaneously, but the Warden here is a very defensive style of class. She gains access to a lot of mobility style of things that allow her to jump in the fray, you know, hit people with AOE abilities, um, give uh, her teammates buffs like increased defensive and HP, uh, or increased movement speed and damage, depending on which one she has active. She can stun people in place, she can even spin. Spinning to win is a part of this game, and it's quite awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and capture this. Now, if we capture this and then we go ahead and drop off one of the relics, uh, we'll get increased points for actually doing so. Where is everybody? It's three versus one here. No one is actually in this game. Apparently not. Well, if no one actually joins this... Ah, it killed me! I got devoted. I, okay, I thought I said it's, I got de uh, demoted, but in fact, I got moved to the devoted here. All right, so there's two versus two. Not very many people here. I'm not going to stay for a whole match because it's going to be somewhat boring. But what I will do is I'll show you exactly uh, how these mechanics work. So you have these areas here. Uh, these are the relics. Now, these relics will, over time, go back to where they were picked up from. But it's basically like capture the flag. Now, he's trying to get some of these up on me. And I'm going to just whirlwind myself backwards here, which is quite nice. Stun him in place. Now, remember, oh, what is going on here? Got two assassins versus a warden. And this this honestly reminds me a lot of, like, typical... There we go. Stun that guy. This honestly reminds me a lot of, like, WoW 2v2. And, in fact, I'm not really sure if the arena system uh, in the game is like WoW. Or if it's more of just, like, a few... Come on. Let's see. Let's go ahead to... Use this again. Increased HP. I think. Either increasing HP or increased damage. Knock these guys back here. I think he actually got taken out. He did. Now, my cool ability is that when I go in this mode right here, I gain full stacks of vengeance or... I forget exactly what it's called. But what it allows me to do is it allows me to completely mitigate against... Come on. They took me out. Look at those two. Able to completely kite me. Oh, my God. All right. So, Vengeance here is my secondary ability. What I do when I hit Vengeance, I'll respawn in just a couple seconds, uh, is I'll gain some stacks of it, which I can then use for Raise Morale and Protect Allies. Raise Morale is the one that grants the, the defense, uh, offensive bonuses. Uh, Protect Allies is the one that grants the defensive bonuses, like increased health, increased uh, mitigation, etc. All right. So, got one stack up there. You notice it says one. Can't see that guy. Okay. Stun this guy. Got him out of stealth. All right, only got one stack. You have to actually be close to them. You know, you can whiff your abilities. It isn't like, uh, say, Wrath of Heroes, Warhammer Wrath of Heroes. We remember that game shut down not too long ago. Uh, Warhammer Wrath of Heroes had it where immediately when you targeted someone, there we go, stunned him, found him. Immediately when you targeted someone, you were just auto-locked on. And no matter what, you know, the enemy did, there was no way for you to actually get out of it. I'm going to knock this guy around here with my ability. It's a good way to get out of things. Stun him again. This gives me a defensive bonus. Look at this guy here. Not so fast, buddy. Let's see if I can get him. I'm going to spin like a helicopter. There you go. Stunned again. Keep building this up. Get my offensive bonus now. There we go. Oh, he got it. Now the other one got it. No. Where's my teammate? Where's my teammate? Gotta knock this guy around. Ah, oh, man. Oh, man. So close. Oh, my God. I got it now. Now I have this. Now I have to survive, which is fine. Pretty easy to do so as a warden. You know, again, you're you're like the tank. You know, you're you do respectable damage. Is there a guy here? I keep like hitting someone. Come here, angry bot. Get off my teammate. Stole my relic. All right. So it does use energy to use your special ability, so, and so you kind of just have to stay in combat as much as possible. Um, this guy is jumping over the top of me, but he's not going to actually be able to get it, I don't think. 
Oh, maybe he does actually get it. I don't know. This game... Yeah, you can capture it. You don't actually have it. Ah, that's a little bit annoying. Because if you're a really quick class... You can just basically side skirt everybody. Alright, so I killed him. So I'll go put it back. I mean, again, I wasn't expecting this to be like a really intense match. Especially after I got moved from teams. And they were already super far ahead. But I will get a capture here. Alright, awesome there. Awesome bossom. Let's go ahead and move up here. Try to get one last kill. And then I'll jump into a full match once again. With more people. I mean, overall, would I play this game? I, I, I bought it, so obviously I, I found something interesting about it. And honestly, I like the fact that all the different abilities that you have access to. And I like the fact that they keep adding more classes. I'm going to do that to gain my uh, defensive bonus here. They're not going to be able to, especially with two of us here. But what they do will do is go for the... They are going to go for this, I know. Let's go ahead and take that off there. I don't want them to take this. Oh, he's getting taken down. I can't go to him. I oh, still died to the bleed. Come on. Come on. If they had smaller arenas. Oh, look at that. Boom, baby. Get out of here. Gonna take you out. See? No matter what, you can still have fun with the Warden, even your defensive class there. Alright, so I've survived for four minutes. You can see I get extra HP from doing this, but we're not gonna win this game. Not not 4v3 with one guy not doing anything, apparently. Alright, let's go ahead and just jump out of this. Sorry, guys. I gotta make this interesting. Let's jump back to the main menu here, and we'll go back. One thing I forgot to show you really quick. If you go to level up area, you can see your total stats up here for entirety. So you can see account stats and then individual class stats as well. As you cycle through the classes, you can see how well you've done each one. So if you like stats, you like seeing how well you do, sort of comparing, this game does give this to you. Now, because this game has since gone free to play and they're you know opening it up for more players, the developers still want to continuously add stuff to the game. More classes, more arenas, different stuff for you to do, different modes. And they've all sort of talked about this in their developer updates on the website. So I would definitely recommend checking it out with, you know, kind of keep in mind that the game just went free to play, right? So all of their ambitions, what they want to do, those are all still, you know, just getting going now the fact that they've actually gone free to play. Uh, let's see here. I'll go with Ravager. Ravager's pretty fun. Ravager allows me to pull people to myself and then pull myself to other people and flail around like a madman. He's got some kind of crustacean armor on myself that looks somewhat weird. All right, see if I can... Uh, so I was going to try to see if I can jump and like get him midair, but I think I mistimed it. All right, so let's come up here. Oh, there's so many of these guys. Why did I come up here? That was a bad idea. Let's go ahead and just run away from that. Let's, let's act like this hadn't happened. Unfortunately, for the fact that you can shoot pretty much as far as you can see, it means that as a melee class, I'm a little bit screwed. Yeah, see, they're gonna. I'm gonna blind here. I can't see anything. I'm. I'm hurt though. They're shooting from. I got killed. I'm not very good at this game, guys. I was a lot better before I was recording. I don't know what exactly happened, but again. The game itself, very much like PvP in a lot of MMOs, although action-based. So if you play World of Warcraft or you play MMO just to sort of experience something like this, you may want to give this a try for the simple fact that it has a lot of the elements that people love about, you know, MMO PvP. The ability to have a lot of abilities that you chain together and they really feel unique in each individual class. The ability for you to, you know, use your skills, not just your stats, uh, to show how good you are, you know, and it truly be an even game. Alright, I'm gonna have to switch to this. Alright, here, let's see if I can. Got some. Oh, gotta. I'm gonna die to stuns and bleeds. Look at this. Range classes, guys. They're way strong. Holy crap. If I go to this class, I go to Pathfinder here. I mean, we have three Pathfinders on her. I think they do need to get rid of how far you can actually shoot at someone. Because even if they go invisible or something like that, I mean, look at this. I can hit people from halfway across the map. That's not really fair. Especially if they, you know, most of the sort of gap closing abilities um, are maybe 20 feet at best. You know, 20, 30 feet. You've got abilities that increase your speed, sure. Uh, got some arrows in that guy. Let's see if I can poison him. 
Alright, poisoned. He's up poison. The Pathfinder has access to quite a lot of traps, which allow slow, slow him people down. Or to uh, simply... Oh, I'm getting ignited. Alright, kind of finally get out of there. Alright, so here's cool. Alright, so an example of the movement system ability here allows me to jump around. Kind of jump in between these areas here. I'm not very good at it. It takes some practice. In fact, there is tutorial areas where you can practice that. Uh, but I myself am not, not that good. Alright, so what else do I got here? I got an ability that lets me pin someone in place. Which is that. And I can put a bleed on him. Boom, taken out. Oh, no. Health. Give me health. There. Stun that guy. He's got me in his little vision thing. I think he's got a bleed on him. Yeah, there we go. Tater Tot, it's down. All right. No wonder people play the Pathfinder. So easy. All right. So I can basically do that and go all the way up, as you can see. That was one of the accurate representations of it, which makes cool. I mean, it's really easy to get up to really high places if they have those things set up for it. Uh, but let's see. Can I hit that guy over there? No, oh, he's blocking it. Yeah, I mean, look. That's so far. Like, I don't know if there's actually damage. Min oh, oh. Put a trap down. Oh, I got me at the very last second. Ugh. Uh, Pathfinders are really good against... Ooh, I inflicted a lot of damage, though. Pathfinders are pretty good uh, against assassins. Simply the fact that your traps, you know, if they're in stealth, you can completely mitigate them. Because uh, they'll just run into your trap. It's really actually pretty hard to see it. All right, can I get that guy over there? Yep, look. So you can kind of see it. I'm hitting it from this far. He's going to have to drop down. He doesn't even really know where I'm hitting him from because it's so far away. And I can just kind of comfortably stand right here. See if I can get this guy. Oh, he's blocking. Got him with some poison, looks like. One other thing that I am, like to make mention is, if you're not a range class, um, typically, a lot of your abilities I find are like very niche. So you're going to be using mainly your your left auto attack. After you sort of use your, your main abilities, your... your you're not using your other abilities quite as often after you get, you know, your bleeds up, what have you. Uh, a lot of your, your energy is going to be used for, like, bouncing and moving around. Um, some traps. Oh, God, I'm dead. Let's see here. Yep, not fast enough, although I did knock them all down. Let's try to get one more kill before the end of this, guys. Just so I can try to save face a little bit. It's four to six, though. You, I mean, you can't really expect it. All of them, except for one class, is ranged. So that kind of gives you an idea of how good range are on most maps. I have seen a little bit some maps that are a little bit more close quarter where melee is done better. But a lot of these maps are meant to take advantage of the movement system, which makes it really easy for you to jump around, etc. And honestly, it, it just becomes a pain, a chore for most uh, melee. You know, you saw the assassin picking off a stationary targets, etc. But assassin is one of the classes that's actually, you know, I knew he's behind me because I saw that him go invisible here. I missed his attack, unfortunately, because he got he has like an ability that lets me uh, miss one of my special attacks. Oh. Alright. Oh, I, oh, I fell off the map. What? Oh, he fell off the map too. We both fell off the map. Alright, it's alright. It was even, guys, even. Alrighty here. So let's see what we can do. Got a guy to shoot down there. Now, one of my abilities, I believe, lets me teleport with where someone is. If I activate it again. Oh, apparently I activated it, but then I came out of stealth. Okay. They just went to a shadow world where both of them fight against each other. But uh, they won. All right, guys. That was pretty pathetic. It wasn't exactly last, but I didn't come in last. <sighs> I didn't come in the game last, rather. All right. So, in conclusion, Forge, free to play, on Steam now from developers Dark Veil. Vale. Um, hopefully they continuously add more content. I would like them to look into range being a little bit OP, at least on the larger maps. Uh, definitely taking away like the maximum range that you can shoot someone from would certainly help that uh, a great deal. But let me know what you guys think about the game in the comments. Until next time, this has been Spunkify, and I'll see you guys later. Spunkify, out.